This video is brought to you by Ultium Designer. If you want to make a long range RC controller ranging from 1 km to 5 km using LoRa and Arduino, then this video is for you. Because after watching this video, you will be able to make your own RC controllers for planes, RC cars, RC trucks, RC boats, RC helicopters, RC robots and more. Basically anything you wish to wirelessly control or a long distance. For the past three months, I have been using the AI Thinkers 433 MHz R8-02 LoRa SX1278 transceiver modules and I'm completely amazed by their performance. I use the same LoRa transceiver modules to make a long range water level indicator system and besides that, I also build a LoRa based home energy monitoring system. I'm very satisfied with the performance and range of these LoRa modules. By the way, I have already made a video on LoRa range test in which I use three different types of antennas to determine the maximum wireless communication distance. If you need a distance of up to one kilometer, you can use LoRa web antennas. For distances between two to three kilometers, you should use flexible PCB antennas. And if you require a range of five kilometers or even more, I suggest using a combination of suction cup antenna and flexible PCB antenna. I highly recommend that you watch my video on LoRa range test. I have added a link in the description. But just long distance is not enough because RYLR896 LoRa modules by Rex technology can send and receive data over a long distance of 15 kilometers. But they are quite slow and can't be used for making RC planes, RC cars, etc. So today we are going to test if the AI Thinkers R8-02 LoRa transceiver modules are fast enough to build an RC controller for controlling planes, cars, trucks, boats, etc. We need to see if along with the long distance capability, its communication speed is also fast. This is crucial because data communication speed matters the most in radio controllers. RC planes, RC cars and RC boats require control sticks to be highly responsive. If there is any delay or lag in communication, then you won't be able to fly an RC plane or drive an RC car or a boat effectively. For the demonstration purposes, I have built this fully functional prototype model. It's a two channel RC controller, but you can increase the number of channels as per your needs. I will explain this in the programming. Anyways, I'm using one channel for controlling the speed of 775 DC motor and the other channel for controlling the server motor. Instead of using the 775 DC motor, you can also use a brushless DC motor. On the transmitter side, a joystick and LoRa module are connected to the Arduino. For now, forget about these relays and buzzer. On the receiver side, along with the LoRa module, I have also connected a 10 kg high torque server motor and a 12 volt 775 motor through this 320 amps brushed DC motor controller. I'm going to use my created 4S lithium ion battery to power up the receiver side. Even this setup is more than enough for building an RC board or an RC car because you can use this servo motor for the steering and this 775 motor is the engine. On this development board, I have added this 5 volt and 3 amps power supply which can power up the Arduino and multiple servos. If you remove these relays, terminal blocks, transistors, resistors, female headers and the buzzer, you can reduce the circuit size. You can watch my video on the Arduino and LoRa based development board. And if you want to use this setup for controlling a brushless DC motor, then you will have to replace this controller with this ESC. I'm already planning on building an RC plane, so consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my video on LoRa based long range RC controller. Anyway, let's start the practical demonstration and afterwards I will explain the circuit diagrams and programming. I have powered up the transmitter and receiver side. When the joystick is in the middle position, the servo motor stays at 90 degrees and the DC motor is completely stopped. This is insanely responsive. I have been flying RC planes and drones and right now it reminds me of the throttle and joystick. I can control the motor speed and servo position both at the same time and I don't see any delay or lagging issues. You might be thinking the servo is slow or lagging but it's not like that. It's just because of its size. 
it's bigger and dates why to you it might appear a little bit slow but in reality it's quite responsive normally we use micro servo motors on rc planes the reason i'm using this large servo motor is to let you know that my rc controller is powerful enough to be used in rc cars rc boats rc trucks and rc planes etc in fact i have also tested it with a 25 kg torque motor with such high torque servos you can control almost any rc machine so i'm pretty satisfied with this first test and now i can design my own flight controller for an rc plane and a radio control system for cars and boats etc now let's go ahead and take a look at the transmitter and receiver side wiring Ultim Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultim Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultim Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for the delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Easily work together with your mechanical team and forget about the days of swapping design files. Every design change stays in sync between Ultium Designer and Solidworks, PTC Crew, Autodesk Inventor, Autodesk Fusion 360 or Siemens NX. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. One of the best things about Ultium Designer is that you can share your designs with your team members using Ultium 365. They can check your design, leave comments, and if there are any issues, they can fix them from anywhere in the world. Ultium Designer also uses the world's fastest company search engine, Octopart, so you won't have any difficulty in searching for components. Links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365, and Octopart are given in the description. The plus 5 fold and ground pins of the analog joystick are connected to the Arduino 5 fold and ground pins. The VRX and VRY pins are connected to the Arduino analog pins A0 and A1. This is the LoRa R8-02 433 MHz transceiver module and its NSS, SCK, MOSI and MISO pins are connected to the Arduino pins 10, 13, 11 and 12. The reset pin of the LoRa module is connected to the Arduino pin 9 and its 3.3 volt and ground pins are connected to the Arduino 3.3 volt and ground pins. And don't forget to add these 22 microfarad and 0.1 microfarad decoupling capacitors. You can follow this circuit diagram. The VN and ground wires can be connected to an external regulated 5 volt power supply. On my board, I have this 5 volt and 3 amps power supply, and if you do want to make this power supply, then you can follow this circuit diagram. The servo motor VCC and ground wires are connected to the Arduino VN and ground pins which are connected to the 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. The servo motor signal wire is connected to the Arduino PWM pin 9. The VCC and ground wires of the brushed motor controller are connected to the same VN and ground pins. The signal wire is connected to the Arduino PWM pin 3. These red and black wires with the XT60 connector are used to connect a 3S, 4S or 5S LiPo or lithium ion battery to power up the DC motor. In my case, I have connected this 775 brush DC motor with the controller output wires. The LoRa module and 5 volt power supply wiring remain exactly the same. You can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. This is the transmitter and this is the receiver side programming and as usual before you start the programming first of all make sure you aid all the necessary libraries. You can download the LoRa library from the article available on electronicclinic.com. Anyway first let's take a look at the transmitter side programming. The joystick two pins VRX and VRY are connected to the Arduino pins A0 and A1. I have defined two variables for storing the values of VRX and VRY. And I'm using the same local address and destination address. These are the same addresses I have been using in majority of my LoRa based projects. By using addresses, you get a full control over which LoRa module you want to send data. You can define multiple LoRa nodes if in case you want to send control signals to multiple receivers. Anyway, you can watch my video on how to use single transmitter with multiple receivers. Code inside the setup function is exactly the same. 
Inside the loop function, we simply read the joystick x-axis and y-axis values and store them in these variables. Then we create a message and use comma to separate these values. On the receiver side, I'm going to use comma as the delimiter to split and retrieve these values. So right now, it's a two-channel RC controller. You can add another joystick, some potentiometers and buttons. Read values from the desired components, store them in variables, and then add those variables in this message, and don't forget to add commas. So this is how you can add more channels. Anyway, once the message is ready, then we simply send it to the receiver side. Laura, now let's go ahead and take a look at the receiver side programming. On the receiver side, things are pretty straightforward and easy, and I'm sure you already know about how to use servos. If not, then you can watch my videos on servo motors. Anyways, you can see I have defined some variables and I'm using the same addresses, but this time the local address is 0xff and the destination address is 0xb. Inside the setup function, we activated the ESC and servo, which are connected to pins 3 and 9. These are PWM pins. Now let's go to the loop function. Inside the loop function, we simply read the entire message and then using the get value function, we split the entire message using comma as the delimiter and store the corresponding values and variables to control the motor speed and servo angle. And then there are if conditions to control the speed of DC motor and angle of the servo is per the joystick movement. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.